cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, a cursed fortress. I heard many stories about the shepherdess. She was killed in a very brutal way. An asylum of horror. I've seen patients beaten. It was like hell. Hell on earth. The smell is awful. It's really kind of creepy. A haunted lighthouse. There is something going on out there. Hey guys, come on up here. I want you to look at this. And the Olsen family arrives for a night of terror in Chillingham. We have a place to show you here. It is said, be gone from Chillingham by nightfall, or you will have to contend with the evil forces that walk amongst us. a place scary it's said that to cleanse cursed ground one should use sacred chants and holy artifacts in a traditional ceremony but in the case of a haunted fortress in northern Italy it would take more than an ancient ritual to make the dead leave the living alone to Genoa to report and investigate for a magazine about so many ghosts they have in this twisted town. He's a very famous person, very popular here in Genoa. Marco liked to call himself Alex the Wizard. He's very involved with uh, any kind of project linked with strange things like witches, uh, ghosts and uh, the science. More than powers, I would call it faculties. I have a strong interior power that enables me to dispel evil. If I had to define this occupation, I would say Ghostbuster. Ghostbuster. Genova è una città molto particolare, molto affascinante, misteriosa, intrigante. Genova is a fascinating, magical and very haunted city. There are persistent reports of ghost encounters, and these seem to be linked to the city's medieval history. Genoa is also a major center of witchcraft and pagan ritual. Something very interesting about Genoa is also the surroundings. I mean, the hills that surround the city. On the top of many of these hills, you can see many fortresses, military fortresses from the past. One of them, Fortress Perone, it's very famous uh, because some mysterious things are happening there. Forte Sperone, the site of a brutal murder in 1685. story about the shepherdess that was killed in the fortress. She was bringing here for her man, for her boyfriend, some food. She was captured by a man, by a violent man, and she was killed in a very brutal way, in a horrible way. For more than 300 years, there have been sightings of the murdered shepherdess, Maria Nina. 
Two years ago, I fell asleep here during a boring theater show. While I slept, everyone left. And then suddenly, I heard a horrible scream. When I looked up, I saw a young woman with panic in her eyes. She said a man was trying to kill her. When I stood up, she vanished. I ran away and never looked back. There are many stories told, as well as tales of starvation. But the ghost of the murdered shepherdess has been seen by many, many witnesses, and has even left her mark in blood on more than one occasion. I find that one of the most interesting stories, it's about a fashion show made some years ago in the fortress itself. At the end of the show, the designer found a bloody hand print in a wedding dress. And uh, I also have seen so many pictures of this. Marco Pepe explored Forte Sperone to locate the most intense area of spirit activity. Marco has uh, many different kind of instruments to show us where he will perform a seance to invoke um, a ghost of the young shepherdess. The seance was performed at the spot where Maria and Nina's presence was the strongest. Signore delle porte dimensionali, porte dimensionali. Figlio, del tempo. figlio del tempo, diffondi nei nostri cuori, nei nostri cuori. La, forza la forza della tua essenza. Voglio posso e comando, voglio posso e comando, e così sia, e così sia. The spirit of the young shepherdess, Maria Nina, was summoned to speak through a medium. something like this ceremony. I must confess, for a few moments I felt I was really kid scary. Something authentic happened here. Something paranormal. It's difficult to describe, but I feel that we liberated the shepherdess from this place, from the torment of her murder. Peace has finally come for Maria Nina. It's something very strange in a way. I came here to report and investigate about a ghost. And uh, I became a believer. 
coming up next. The Olsen family faces their worst fears at Chillingham Castle. I wouldn't laugh. <laughs> you really should not laugh because tonight you will experience things <laughs> and you'll not know what they are. And later, one man's ordeal in a haunted lighthouse. We dared a family to spend a night in one of the most haunted places in all of England. Why would anybody want to endure an evening engulfed by fear? The Olsons have absolutely no knowledge of where they're going or what terrors await them. Will bravery triumph or will they succumb to the bizarre and unexplained forces at work in the place they call Chillingham? awaits the Olsen family. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was it to uh, do this adventure? My wife's. A hundred percent my wife's. <laughs> So I think they're scared, but they're they're as excited as I am. I'm scared right now, and I'm going. That's why I kind of like, I thought this would be so neat, because I believe in ghosts. Because I, I, I won't be the first one to be screaming. <laughs> Fifteen hours later, Northumbria, England. family is approaching Chillingham Castle. Please come in. We have a place to show you here. It is one of the most scary places on earth. It's called Chillingham Castle, and we don't have very long. We've got to get you prepared, so come in now. Now, along this road, we have an awful lot of things that you must be aware of. From almost every tree along here, we've had bodies hanged as a warning to other people not to come close. Across there, we have a lake where, while stretching it about 30 or 40 years ago, they came across hundreds of body parts where various people who died here were just strewn into the lake. I wouldn't laugh <laughs> because people really, you really should not laugh because I know a lot of you think that this is a very lighthearted thing. But just trust me, I've spent 20 years researching into things like this and tonight you will experience things that you will not be able to comprehend and you'll not know what they are. And I know that you, you might want to smile and you might feel that this is funny, but there's not many people that come to Chillingham Castle who leave smiling. Now, there's a few things that we've got to do for your own protection. Guys, come in, please. Let's get everybody suited up. Now, understand that most people who see spirit will see them not straight ahead. They will see them from the cones at the sides of their eyes. It will be things almost off-center. For example, if you feel the brush of something, if you have a strange smell, because it's very, very common, if you feel a tackiness on something that you touch, I warn you that I would tell anybody not to dabble with things that they don't understand, purely and simply, because it is real. I'm telling you it's real. I've witnessed a lot of people that haven't believed that have ended up in big trouble because they've gone in 
thinking, I know better. Believe me, there's things in this place that will freak you out. In your case, you're surrounded by life. I don't know why you want to mess with death. I really don't. You're scared. <laughs> You've yeah. got good cause to be scared. As for you, I'm not sure you believe at all. No, I do. But by tonight, you will believe. As for you, you've almost been close to death, and you're going to get closer tonight. When tragedy and suicide struck a lonely lighthouse sitting off the coast of Connecticut, this friendly beacon of safety became a deadly tower of terror. I heard it was haunted. There is something going on out there. It's not manned anymore. It's haunted. The Ledge Lighthouse, New London, Connecticut. Currently uninhabited, it is said to be haunted by the lighthouse keeper who was stationed there in the 1930s. There are lots of versions of the story of, of Ernie, the ghost, at Ledge Lighthouse. He was the lighthouse keeper, the guy who would make sure the light was on at night. You know, on the foggy days, the horn would blow. His wife went off with a sea captain, and uh, he got distraught one night, and he jumped off the top of the lighthouse and committed suicide. As I was actually approaching the lighthouse and preparing to board the lighthouse, I had this horrendous anxiety attack. I can't say a magnetic field pushing me front or back, but it was, there was something that did not want me to be there. In 1998, a reporter from Japan was sent to investigate the story. I work for a Japanese television show called Sights Unseen. It's a mystery investigation show. They sent me to New London in USA to investigate the haunted lighthouse. I heard from the locals about the ghost Ernie and others. At first, when I started out on the journey, I was lighthearted, but as the boat approached the lighthouse, I had this feeling of trepidation. The boat left, and I was alone, completely alone on the haunted lighthouse. I brought along a videotape camera, some books, and some food. I was prepared to spend the night alone with the ghost. Early on, there was nothing. It was just a night alone. But later, after I dozed off, I heard a voice. It was distinct unmistakable but when I tried to talk to it I was answered with silence I did not sleep the entire night in the morning the return boat was a welcome sight In 2000, a paranormal team ventured out to the lighthouse in search of spirit activity. My name is Christine Kaczynski, and I'm a paranormal researcher. We go into houses and dwellings. Uh, we research any phenomenon that's out of the realm of um, what you consider to be normal. We've been doing this for about 25 years. Oh, this is going to be a good night. You feel the energy? Oh, look at this place, huh? I know. From 1940 to 1992, 46 Coast Guard servicemen did tours of duty at the lighthouse. Only one would tell his story. As far as um, things happening, uh, you know, most of the stuff happened at night. Uh, just creepy feelings, you know, pools of cold air. One night, uh, he threw a, a coffee cup, and it, it all shot all the way across the room, nearly hit me in the head, and just scared the hell out of me. My bedroom 
was on the northeast corner of the lighthouse, which is a very haunted area. And um, one, one night in particular, uh, I was walking back to my room and I felt this force um, pushing me back. And as, as, as I tried to push, uh, it's like it resisted me. And it, uh, it, it, it I, I swear, it, it felt like Ernie was trying to kill me. Uh, as, as crazy as that sounds, I moved my bed downstairs and slept on the sofa. And uh, I never went back to that room. There is something beyond our dimension. And it's just fascinating to study it. Some people are very, very angry that they, they passed on. And when you die, you're still the same person, but you're released from your physical self. Anything that's out of the ordinary, that's unexplained, we find very interesting. So uh, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. It isn't necessarily there at the time we take the picture. So it's more or less a psychic impression that it puts on the film itself. Digital photos reveal a shadow on the left side of every picture. Many have been startled by disembodied sounds coming from the lighthouse stairways. Ernie is a very angry uh, spirit that can't release yet. He could actually replay his death many times. He could probably climb the stairs and just keep doing a reenactment constantly over and over and over again. Hey guys, come on up here. I want you to look at this. Third floor. The paranormal team captured strange floating lights with their infrared cameras, objects invisible to the naked eye. The investigators believe the orbs are evidence of a malevolent spirit. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. the lighthouse keeper still resides here. We have a, a very authentic, haunted lighthouse here. Whoever Ernie is, I hope one day he rests in peace. What's going today? I know one thing, no one will be able to sleep on that lighthouse until he does. Well, think what you'd like, but I'm telling you, it's Ernie's ghost out there, and he doesn't like it when people are out there, and I, for one, am never going out there again. Coming up next, the spirit that lurks in the desert ghost town. Doors being kicked in. And later. I heard stories about specific murder that took place here. A closed mental hospital in New England. <laughs> what makes a ghost town? An absence of human population? Or an abundance of spirit activity? In a small desert town in California, unsuspecting visitors found out why. This place was aptly named Death Valley Junction. The Amargosa Hotel and the town of Death Valley Junction happens to be the most spirited, haunted place I have ever been. This town has, it's like a crossroads. It's like a Times Square of the spirit world. Doors being kicked in, glass falling, furniture crashing onto the floor. 
You know, in a horror movie, the moans and groans, you really would hear that. Do I think this place is haunted? I know damn well it's haunted. In 1994, a motion picture crew shooting at the Armagosa Hotel captured an unexplained phenomenon on film. I originally went to the Amargosa uh, looking for a location that was far removed from everyday life in the, in, the, in the desert as far out off the beaten path as I could find. There are certain sections of the Amargosa Hotel that are just flat out creepy. All you have to do is walk back there and not only does it look creepy but you walk into a room and you get this visceral feeling. The Amargosa Inn is one of the scariest places I've ever been. We were in the middle of a take. 87 Baker, take one. Pretty simple scene, just walking down the hall. Set and action. Hello? A few seconds after we finished the take, I heard our sound mixer yelling in the hallway that, what was that? He played back the audio and we could distinctly hear on the audio a track a kind of cry. And no one in there when we were filming had heard this sound. Is anybody there? Cut! And then later, I guess, when they got it developed, there was some sort of a shadowy image that seemed to be following me as I was walking down the hall. But there was nobody there. Cut! Members of the cast and crew began to explore the dark side of the hotel. We made our own Ouija board. We had somebody taking notes, and we had somebody there with a video camera so that we could record everything. Oh, who's moving? Yeah, I am. <laughs> we started asking questions. Spirit, what's your name? You still moving it? H. Hey. The Ouija board spelled out the word hangman. I started to have this, this feeling come up inside of me, this sadness. It wasn't me feeling it. It was coming from something else, and I was outside of myself watching it, knowing that it wasn't me. The next day, my skin peeled like I had a sunburn. We were shooting in the middle of January and it rained the whole time we were there. So it was impossible for me to have gotten a sunburn. I feel like I've had inside of me something of that grief that is without explanation. Well, I've talked to a woman who is a psychic. She wants to go back to find out what it was, what, if anything, it wanted. Uh, why me? The feeling that I get from this place is evil. Alma determined that the evil energy was close to where Monique held her seance. It's very strong feelings in here. Here it is, it's coming from here. A young man was feeling degraded, possibly suicidal. There's been some tragedies here, I happen to know that. There was supposed to have been a man hung back here. I don't know what the story was, but there was somebody in the dormitory that was hung. I haven't been back to the Amargosa Hotel since that night. I'm a little scared. I don't know what to expect, but I, I hope that it brings some sort of a closure so I can move on from this. Alma and Monique returned to the site of the seance to make contact with Hangman. Yourself. 
Suddenly, Alma felt Hangman beckoning her outside the hotel. <laughs> Cemetery to an unidentified patch of ground. I sense the spirit presence here beneath the earth. He doesn't deserve to be here. He's buried on unconsecrated ground. I thought he was a suicide. No, he's not a suicide. He's been murdered. And he doesn't deserve to be here. You can rest now. Be at peace. I think we did what the spirits wanted us to do. I feel a tremendous sense of relief. I wish I could say everything would be all right, but I, I can't say that. I still feel something dark attached to this place. Coming up next, a closed mental hospital. It was like hell. Its history is so grim, the exact location could not be revealed. In the eastern United States, there's an abandoned mental asylum with such a terrible past we aren't allowed to mention its name. Its shocking history is validated by those who venture inside this terrifying place. A closed mental hospital somewhere in New England. Its history is so grim, the exact location cannot be revealed. I've seen abuse, so I've seen patients beaten. It was horrible. These people were strapped down, had bare electrodes stuck on their heads, and were treated to a series of memory-erasing pulses of electricity. In this location, I've heard about the murder involving a female patient who was, if not brutally killed, at least brutally dismembered by another patient and buried in a couple separate packages on the property. The history of mental abuse, torture, and even murder led to the closing of the hospital in 1990. Just outrageous stuff that you wouldn't want done to an animal, never mind another human being. It was worse than a mental ward. It was like hell. Hell on earth. The hospital caught the attention of a website that documents abandoned locations. I've always wondered what goes on in these buildings, abandoned and left there to rot. I can see the insides of some of these places, and it's really great. The website, I've had it for about two years. I try to share as many photographs and stories as I can of my explorations. So the website is to, to share the photos and adventure stories as well. Julia brings adventurers together to help photograph bizarre and abandoned locations. The mission in New England to photograph key rooms inside the mental hospital. I expect it will find a lot of the records and a lot of the patient effects in close to the same condition that they left them. Julia, nice to meet you. I'm Rob. I do get a lot of email from people who would like to go on expeditions with me and I contact them and these people seem just very interested. I'm always the one cowering like in the back of the movie theater and right now I'm, I'm pretty nervous. There's an opportunity to actual, actually take part of this. I jumped on the opportunity. I didn't even think twice about it. I've done this quite often, and I have to tell you that it's, it can be a little bit dangerous. A lot of the times in these places, we have broken staircases. We may have collapsed floors. So we have to be very, very careful about everything. I can assure you, it's a dangerous location. I'm going to take the lead, and Aaron's going to do follow-up in the rear just to make sure you no, no one gets lost or hurt or anything like that. It's really wet here. Aaron, do we need to want to go this way? We're going to want to go 
over here. If you're exploring inside a city, you should watch out for other people. So it's probably not good to do it by yourself. A group of two or three people is, is better. This is for electroshock surgery. These look really old. Yeah. I heard stories about specific murder that took place here. Are you and talking really about interested. the uh, dismemberment one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty gruesome one. It's really kind of creepy. Um, but uh, there was a murder here that I find particularly fascinating, which um, it caused a big scandal several years ago. A male mental patient murdered another, a female mental patient. This woman got dismembered and they found her in several holes buried on campus. Before they found the murderer, they found someone else playing with seven of her teeth. So, I mean, that's something to think about what kind of place this was where that could happen, you know. The escaped murderer was never captured. Some believe he lurks inside the mental hospital. Every hospital has a morgue, so I'm assuming there's going to be a morgue around here. And most morgues have tunnel access. The smell is awful. Breathe through your mouth. What are they? Blood tests. Blood tests, it looks like. Yeah, they've got dates and names on them. As soon as we went back there, he started to move. We were in this, in the, in the morgue area, and I was gonna check out the back, and I just saw like this, I just saw a leg, and like it started to move, and we just got out of there because I didn't want to yeah. find out who it was. That's pretty creepy that somebody's that sleeping in scary. the morgue. We didn't wait around to figure out who no, it was. No, no, we bolted out of there. Oh. <sighs> all kind of walked away with a sense of what we shouldn't be aware of, what we're not supposed to know, because they don't want people to know what happened here. Right. This is the dimensional entrance from their dimension into ours. An underground death chamber. We started hearing things, all different kinds of things. And Chillingham Castle. The Olsen family enters and the doors are locked. I hear screaming, be quiet. Welcome to the castle. Please, come in. 
So what is it that makes a place scary? Often it's hard to believe events that create a dark, sordid history. Truth that's stranger than fiction. That's what you'll find in the scariest places on Earth. I'm Linda Blair. Good night. makes a place scary. It's said that to cleanse cursed ground, one should use sacred chants and holy artifacts in a traditional ceremony. But in the case of a haunted fortress in northern Italy, it would take more than an ancient ritual to make the dead leave the living alone. shepherdess that was killed in the fortress. She was bringing here for her man, for her boyfriend, some food. She was uh, captured by a man, by a violent man, and she was killed in a very brutal way, in a horrible way. For more than 300 years, there have been sightings of the murdered shepherdess, Maria Nina. Two years ago, I fell asleep here during a boring theater show. While I slept, everyone left. And then suddenly, I heard a horrible scream. When I looked up, I saw a young woman with panic in her eyes. She said a man was trying to kill her. When I stood up, she vanished. I ran away and never looked back. Cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, a cursed fortress. I heard many stories about the shepherdess. She was killed in a very brutal way. An asylum of horror. I've seen patients beaten. It was like hell. Hell on Earth. The smell is awful. It's really kind of creepy. A haunted lighthouse. There is something going on out there. Hey guys, come on up here. I want you to look at this. And the Olsen family arrives for a night of terror in Chillingham. We have a place to show you here. It is said, be gone from Chillingham by nightfall, or you will have to contend with the evil forces that walk amongst us. I have a strong interior power that enables me to dispel evil. If I had to define this occupation, I would say Ghostbuster. Ghostbuster. Genoa is a city very particular, very fascinating, mysterious, intriguing. Genoa is a fascinating, magical, and very haunted city. There are persistent reports of ghost encounters, and these seem to be linked to the city's medieval history. Genoa is also a major center of witchcraft and pagan ritual. Something very interesting about Genoa is also the surroundings. I mean, the hills that surround the city. On the top of many of these hills, you can see many fortresses, military fortresses from the past. One of them, Fortress Perone, it's very famous because some mysterious things are happening there. Verone, the 
the site of a brutal murder in 1685. Come to Genoa to report and investigate for a magazine about so many ghosts they have in this twisted town. Marco is a very famous person, very popular here in Genoa. Marco liked to call himself Alex the Wizard. He is very involved with uh, any kind of project linked with strange things like witches, uh, ghosts and uh, the science. More than powers, I would call it faculties.